Final giant structures we will consider in this video are metals. These all share the same structure, whereby electrons in the outer shells of the metal atoms are free to move. The metallic bond is a force of attraction between these free electrons and the positively charged metal ions. Metallic bonds are strong, so metals retain a regular structure and usually have high melting and boiling points. Metals also have common properties. They conduct heat and electricity because of the free electron's ability to move. When we talk about sodium chloride, there aren't actually any individual sodium chloride molecules. Instead, the sodium and chloride ions are arranged in a regular repeating 3D pattern known as a giant ionic lattice. Let's now have a look at the giant ionic lattice of sodium chloride. We know that sodium and chloride ions are electrostatically attracted to one another. Because of this, you will see that the ions are arranged so that the sodium ions are always next to the chloride ions. This arrangement is seen in all directions of the 3D structure. The electrostatic attractions in a lattice structure are very strong. Let's think about it. Each sodium ion is held in place by the electrostatic attraction of six neighboring chloride ions in all possible 3D directions. And similarly, each chloride ion is held in place by the electrostatic attraction of six sodium ions, also in all possible 3D directions. Since this lattice structure is so strong, it explains some key properties of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds have very high melting points. This is because a lot of energy is required to overcome the strong electrostatic attractions holding the 3D lattice structure in place. That nonmetals can join together by covalent bonds, in which they share electrons so that all of the atoms have full outer shells. Sometimes this results in small molecules, such as chlorine or ammonia and we call these simple molecular substances. In other cases though, nonmetals bond covalently to form giant covalent structures, like diamond, graphite, or silicon dioxide. Now, the first thing to know is that covalent bonds are really strong, which means that a lot of energy is going to be needed to break apart any atoms that are covalently bonded to each other. So if we consider a simple molecular substance like chlorine, the atoms within each molecule will be strongly bonded together. However, in order to melt or boil chlorine, we actually don't break these strong covalent bonds. Instead, we only need to break the weak forces that exist between different molecules, which we call intermolecular forces. Because of this, we only need very low temperatures to melt or boil simple molecular substances. For example, chlorine boils at minus 34 degrees Celsius. So moving on to giant covalent structures, these are made of huge numbers of non-metal atoms that are all bonded to each other by covalent bonds. And they're generally arranged into regular repeating lattices, which just means that their structure kind of repeats over and over. The three important examples are diamond, graphite, and silicon dioxide. Sand contains silicon atoms covalently bonded to oxygen atoms. Four oxygen atoms are bonded in a tetrahedral arrangement around each silicon atom. Diamond has a very similar structure, where all of the carbon atoms are joined by covalent bonds in a tetrahedral arrangement seen here. In graphite, the carbon atoms are arranged in hexagonal sheets and have intermolecular forces holding these sheets together. These layers peel away when our pencils make a mark on paper because the forces holding the layers together are intermolecular and are quite weak. So when you are writing with a pencil, you are actually transferring sheets of carbon. Seeing as all of the atoms are joined by covalent bonds, these materials have very high melting points. Now, the key thing to take away from this video is that simple molecular substances are small molecules that are made up of just a few covalently bonded atoms, and the separate molecules are only joined together by weak intermolecular forces. Meanwhile, in giant covalent structures, 
all of the atoms are covalently bonded in regular repeating lattices, which makes them much stronger and gives them much greater melting and boiling points.